Half time has arrived here in the second of the Guinness All Ireland hurling semi finals. Nicky English is going in to have a word with Erdogan Maksivna. Seems to be unhappy about something. DJ's got two 65s, pointed both of them. So, at half time, they go in. Honor is even. Kilkenny, 10 points. Tipperary, 10 points. It should be a fascinating second half. We'll have comments, we'll have analysis in just a few moments' time. And we're looking forward immediately before we go to our commercial break, maybe to getting a quick word to some of the uh, participants. And let's go down to Jim Carney. And we're joined by Noel Skeen and Ken Hogan of Tipperary. Noel Skeen and Kenny, we neutrals have stood back and admired a massive game, but from your point of view? Well, it's a tight game. There's no quarters given one way or the other. That's the way we were expecting it. Uh, half time, level score, solid play for Spain. Change uh, that uh, DJ take the 65s and Henry take the Britain in and freeze inside. That's all. Nothing funny about it at all, really. Like, you know, DJ is taking good long range freeze at home in the club and he's doing well with them. Like, you know, do you think you'll wait well into the second half before you bring on some good subs you have there? To be quite honest, at the moment, I think the team that's on the field are not doing too bad. So, uh, we look at five minutes into the new half, really. Yeah. Okay, no, we'll let you into Brian and the lad. Ken, from your point of view, I've just been saying that this is a massive game for neutrals. But what do you think? Uh, it's a tough game, we started slowly, Jim, got into the game, the blue decisions have gone against us, we're happy about that. But having said that, the fellas are showing great character and they're hanging in there. It's a super game of hurling, but having said that, we can only look forward to the second half. Yeah, and your free takers too, they're delivering, it's close in and further out. Well, free takers are vital arts in hurling, but having said that, we've got to take off every opportunity that arises. So hopefully we'll take our scores and get the game. Yeah, one brief question finally, Ken, you've got to stop Henry Shefton a bit, surely. Henry Shefton's a great forward, we've got to stop every forward in Kilkenny. And having said that, our back line collectively have played very well. Thanks, Ken. Thanks indeed to Jim Carney and to Ken for those comments. And of course, we'll be hearing the views just after the break very shortly of Jerry Lockdown and to Boss Mulcahy in conversation with Michael Lester. That's coming up after this. Inches in there, right the goal! Right the goal! Yes, the 1967 All-Ireland Hurling Final between Kilkenny and Tipperary. The Cats winning their 16th title that day, captained by the great Jim Tracy. And that actually was my first ever visit to Croke Park in 1967. Now, just a reminder about our email address, the Sunday game at rte.ie. It's where you contact us, and that's also our website there uh, on screen for you, www.rte.ie forward slash GAA forward slash Sunday game. Now, a reminder about the man of the match uh, phone line numbers. If you want to pick the man of the match or help to pick the man of the match from this game, it's 1550 717 114 from the Republic. And those calls are 74 cents per minute. 0906 614 2048 from Northern Ireland, 60 pence per minute. And those lines are actually open until 8 o'clock tonight. That's the man of the match from Kilkenny and Tipperary. And now, a look at the statistics from the first half of the game. Just confirmation of the score uh, so far. Amazing to think that in a game of such frantic action that there hasn't been a goal, close enough to one or two, mind you. Ten points each then at halftime, seven frees to Kilkenny, four to Tipperary, uh, four wides uh, for Kilkenny, two to Tipperary, and uh, 365 so far in the game. And there's also been three yellow cards, but a good, healthy, tough contest, I think you'll agree, so far. Would you agree with that? Tomorrow? Oh yes, I mean, <laughs> I was still just turned out fantastic and great and stuff like that. But it has been—it has been yeah. brilliant first half. I mean, there's no quarter given or taken, and uh, it's what we come to expect from Tip and Kilkenny. It's hard. It's it's tough. But it's fair, and, and the three yellow cards, you say, don't represent what's gone out there no. in the first half period. And it's very noticeable from the Tipperary point of view. They've moved, maybe dropped back their midfielders, crowded out the Kilkenny kind of forward line as much as possible to stop the ball going inside to the inside line and left an awful lot of space in front of their own full forward line. It's worked, it worked well from in the first half period. Owen Kelly's got three points mm -hmm. off Lee Larkin. Eugene O'Neill has con contributed two points as well. But I suppose the one thing that Nicky would be disappointed was they had goal scoring chances and they didn't take them when they did come around in that first half period. There was two or three goal scoring chances there for Tip and they didn't take those chances. We've highlighted one of them, Ger, just to have a look at here. The ball is kind of tantalisingly just hanging around there waiting for a finish that never came. Well, they got three chances of goals, Tip in the first half. And Kilkenny, I suppose, got one. A brilliant tackle from Paul Armand saved it. Now here we are, you're certain that this is going to be a goal. Is, everything is happening so fast that you can hardly see what's going on. But actually what is a testament is the brilliant skill of both sides. Look at what Owen Kelly does, how he controlled that ball. Great save by James McGarry. And then Noel Hickey, the skill he had in controlling that fast ball coming to him. But it's just a reflection of the way the game is going. Yeah. Like, when have we seen a better first half than this? 
the pace, the energy of the game, the quality of the scores, the quality of the defending, it's absolutely mind-boggling. Sometimes a game of this nature is built up so much and turns out to be a yeah. bit of a disappointment. Certainly that's not been the case, it's, it's, it's 35 minutes. It's even minutes. surpassing, uh, yeah. everything. like 10 points each. 10 points each, that's 20 points in the first half. You know, Four chances of goals, ball moving up and down the field at lightning pace, brilliant tackling, brilliant defending as we have said, and tremendous individual dis displays on both sides. Yeah. This is what hurling is all about, games like this. And this is going to be some second half it's of this right game. Down to the Yes, yes, no about that. Yes, yes. We didn't have a goal to admire in the first half. We had some fantastic points to us on both sides. We just picked out two, one from each, just to illustrate this. But some great scores altogether. Yeah, that's as George said there. It's, it's what hurling is all about. I mean, striking from 50 and 60 yards out the field and getting those scores. And this is coming from a puck from Brendan Cummins. This, he was instrumental in the first half as well. Made some fantastic saves. Ball is knocked down to Mark O'Leary and off his left hand. You know, it's, it's coming so natural to him, and that's great ability. And he got another one off his right hand in that first half period as well. On the run, no need to handle it, hit the ball out, off the stick. And it's, it's fantastic to see. And like, that's a credit to great striking ability to the work they put in the practice ground to be able to come up today in Crow Park and put it into, in, 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 into play then as well. This is one, of the, again, for Manny Comerford off his left-hand side. And Andy Comerford has played very, very well today. I mean, he's had his knockers down with Kenny. Had, maybe didn't play up to uh, up to scratch up to now in the championship, but certainly he's playing a captain's role today, and uh, he certainly got a great score there. Yes. He certainly had his knockers earlier on this game because he got a belt early on, Jar uh, actually that had him sort of wobbling around uh, like a, a day old calf for a few minutes, but uh, he's well, he, recovered well. He, he gave a belt earlier on as well. There's just some other fellow wobbling around, <laughs> <laughs> so he got one in return, I suppose. You know, that's really, but himself and Derek yeah. Ling are playing very well at midfield. Even yeah. though Eddie Inright and Tommy Don have had their moments there as well, but uh, I suppose the secret to play has been the display of that half back line in the first 20 minutes. They were absolutely superb. Noel Morris at wing back, uh, uh, Corkin at centre back and Paul Kelly. But uh, after the first 20 minutes, Kenny Forward started gaining possession there and especially Henry Shefflin came into the game. Scored two points from play, scored everything from freeze and he's really given leadership to that Kenny Forward nine now. That's what makes the second half, you know, it's, it's, it couldn't set, be set up better than it is now for the second half. Oh well gentlemen, it's the second half we are thoroughly looking forward to. Now don't forget of course, apart from the second half of this match here at Croke Park coming up, we we also have more football action for you later on because after the replay last night between Dublin and Donegal. Fox, that may steal it now. Magnificently put over the bar by Pat Fox. His fifth point of the day. And that may be, as they say, the insurance point for Tip. That was Tip's success in 1991. Declan Carr, the captain on that occasion. Now, a brief reminder that you can support the Special Olympics next year here and also win yourself a fantastic prize. Take a look at this. It will be the biggest sporting event ever staged in this country with 7,000 athletes representing 160 countries. The Sunday game in association with Unpost are giving you the opportunity to support the games and possibly win yourself a 30,000 euro prize bonanza. Simply buy one of these cards at any post office for two euro, answer the question on the back and you're in with a chance to win a Toyota Avensis plus a holiday for two to New York with $1,000 spending money. Please do support that. Kilkenny have been out on the pitch for a good minute or two. Tip have just arrived, so that's our cue to rejoin our commentary team of Jer Canning and Cyril Farrell. With the score at 10 points apiece. Beautifully balanced start of the second half. Yeah, Don Maxibna just having a little look around. Everybody is in position. Let's hope it's a good one. Just waiting for Paul Kelly to make his way across to left half back for uh, Tiverary. Jostling in midfield already. 35 minutes to go to determine which of these teams will be playing Clare in a few weeks' time. In the Guinness All Ireland hurling final. And this looks like a very good start to the second half for Kilkenny. John Hoyne with his first point. First attack, producing the lead for the Cats. Oh, that's a great catch by J.J. Delaney from the Fenians. In over the head of Martin Comerford this time, waiting for assistance to arrive. Eddie Brennan would like to score two points in rapid succession. Both scored by the men who were playing on the right wing of Kilkenny's attack. And it's 12-10. Yeah, it's a great start, second half, a beautiful ball here, picked up Eddie. Fins on the left and turns on the right. Had a very quiet first half by his standards, but he's off to a flyer. Two points inside 45 seconds. Great start for the Leinster champions. That's uh, Richie Mullally going down there. Richie, whose uh, brother Paddy 
played in the first round match against Dublin just uh, two years ago. Great footballing family as well. Just came down awkwardly. So once again, the team doctor being called out to do some duty. Mullally is a player who's been gaining in confidence over the last couple of seasons under Brian Cody and his backroom team of Johnny Walsh and Noel Skian. He's fit to continue. It'll be a line ball to Tipperary, rocked by those two early points. So Eddie Enright will take this one. Great ball in. Broken down here. They try to gain some advantage. It's not easy. Benny Dunn. Can't get quite past that rock steady. Kilkenny defence. And it's Derek Ling doubling on his way down towards DJ Carey. Henry Shefflin. Kilkenny starting the second half with a real pep in their step. Comerford benefiting as Tipperay run it to take command of that situation. Maybe they will now. Tommy Dunn. Short in the grip on the stick, Tipperary needing an early point, but he can't provide it, and he is furious, I think, with the umpire feeling that it did go over the bar. Well, they were very angry with what they thought was a foul just before half-time. This is it once again here. Well, it may well have just come inside that left-hand post. The umpires didn't give it. Great catch, Henry Shefflin making space for himself. But he's put it wide. First wide of the second half, fifth in all for Kilkenny. A rueful shake of the head. Brendan Cummins from the Bally Bacon Grange Club. Aimed down towards John Carroll, being marked tightly by Peter Barry. Carroll hasn't scored today. Dol Morris watching this one may need the assistance of uh, Tom Costello. Line ball would be to Kilkenny. They're coming across to take it. Here is their midfielder Derek Ling. Low stopped by Tommy Dunn. Driving it back down into the corner there. It's a great catch by Philly Larkin, beating Owen Kelly to it. Great clearance as well. Big roar of approval by the fans just to get that ball out of the danger zone. Yeah, Philly would feel there that he should have had a field. Caught a great ball, was being held back by Owen Kelly. This game is still in a knife edge, just such tip haven't scored yet in the second half, but that much ball has gone up and it's still there to, for any team to win it. Tom Costello, seized on here by Henry Shefflin. Diagonal ball across, dropped by John Hoyne. That was just enough to allow the man in the corner, who was Paul Ormond, to take possession and fire it back downfield. Henry Shefflin jumping, going through two men in between Noel Morris there and Tommy Dunn. And in the end, referee says foul was committed. You can hear what the... Uh, yeah, uh, Ger, your first had an instant where the Kilkenny crowd felt that Henry Shefton should have got a free. Henry did foul the man, and then uh, Thomas Costa came out and fouled Henry. So it'd be interesting what Aidan does. Probably a throw in. Looks like it's going to be two yellows here. Shefton, who's helped himself to five points already in this match, leading scorer in the game. So two yellow cards for Kilkenny, three for Tipperary, and this is what caused all of that. And the referee is going to throw the ball in. Noel Morris can't take it up, it's DJ Carey instead. Still has that lightning pace, getting away from Costello. Big roll from the crowd, and the reason is the white flag. Three points for DJ Carey. It's the one and only time Jordan has got away from Tom Costa today, but he made a count. 
sniping his way through here. Same natural reflexes. And he's back in business again here. Out to the ball first time. Good low ball inside. Trying to keep it going. Getting the pass from March and Comerford on his left hand side on this occasion. Dropping in. Goldberg's committed himself. Got a very good stick on that. Back there helping out is Eddie Enright. Long ball down towards Brian O'Mara. Being challenged there by Richie Mullally. Comes to Peter Barry. Commanding figure in the centre. Andy Comerford beyond his brother inside in the full forward position. Taken nicely by Paul Ormond. Not a very long clearance. John Hoyne is there. Another opportunity for another point. Oh, it's gone over the goalkeeper's head. He needed the assistance there of his cornerback, Paul Ormond. Andy Comerford knocking it back in once again. Breaks down off a defender. And the referee saw some holding and tugging, and it's going to be a free out. Free to Tipperary. Yeah, at the moment, you're right, the game is getting very, very tense. Peter Barry is getting completely on top centre back. Here's a, here you see the breaking ball here. Well, I don't know if the referee has seen Andy come up with because blood streaming down the side of his head there from a, a wound, and he would have to leave the field once the referee has spotted it. Derek Ling puzzled. Referee says, hang on a while. Going across to speak with Peter Barry. Yeah, uh, Jerry, if he's not careful, he's going to ruin, lose the run of himself. Like, no one really is fully sure what he wants. If he's going to give you a card here, you know, like it's how many cards he's given already. Five I didn't or six. see a card that time, probably just ticked his number. You can see getting prepared over there, Charlie Carter. This is Owen Kelly, Andy Comerford is still on the field, the referee has a spot at the cut. Otherwise there would be a need for a blood substitution. This is about 40 metres out. And he's put it wide. Well, can you call their jeer and jar because the field it shouldn't have been a free in the first place. Comer Gleeson is the man standing alongside Nicky English. Big cheer is because Charlie is coming in in place of uh, Eddie Brennan, I think it is. Conor Gleeson is going to come in for Eddie Enright for Tipperary. That switch has now been made. Charlie is a very popular character. Would have been bitterly disappointed not to have started the match. And now the referee has seen the cut on the side of Andy Comerford's head and uh, instructing him to leave the field on a temporary basis. So a blood substitute is being prepared and got ready to come in. Looks like it's Sean Dowling. Yes, it's uh, Sean Dowling who's coming in. At the same time as well, Jerry, you have DJ's got in full forward and Martin Humphrey has switched out uh, to top of the left. Yes, we can expect a lot of action on the sideline before the 35 minutes are up here. That's in towards Martin Comerford. It's very tight, space at a premium. Comes out to Noel Morris here. Runs into the challenge of Shefflin. Yeah, at the moment, Joe, Kikini are fired up, but they're putting all the pressure on top of Tipperary. They're, even, they're hardly even getting space to strike the ball. Andy Comerford is back in. Sean Dowling has made way. Doesn't off for much more than a minute, I suppose. Brian McAvoy will hit this one. Oh, nicely chipped in there. Dropped down, but it comes to Paul Ormond. Went through the fingers that time of uh, Philip Marr. Again, the referee with a smile on the face, but indicating why he is awarding the free out to Tipperary. Not universally popular, that particular decision. That's where it was dropped, spilled out here. 
and they were very glad that Paul Ormond was in the right position at the right time. Brendan Cummins, beyond Conor Gleeson this time, still warming up in this particular match. Comes out to Brian O'Mara. Two men are after him. Malali is one of them. Michael Cavanaugh going out as well. Passes too long, however. Chance to retrieve. Hit inside by Eugene O'Neill. What a start! And it's in! Connor Gleeson was the one who was playing it in, but it was finished, I think, by John Carroll. They're level. It'll be worth watching again. 12 minutes into the second half. Eugene O'Neill firing it across here. This was Gleeson. What an introduction. Saved by McGarry. Came out there to John Carroll. And Carroll has scored after 12 minutes of the second half. Yeah, it was, it was a great save. It's such a beautiful pinpoint pass by O'Neill into Gleeson. Great save, but Carroll was there and just shoved it through. And you'd have to say, Carroll isn't having a great game as such a Peter Barry. He was in the right spot at the right time. He's got the knack of getting vital goals. He's done it time and again. Pressure here on Philip Marr. And he has just lost his concentration. And it's gone for a 65. Martin right. Comfort is a big man and I think he just took his eye off it. There's a great turn, there's a great ebb and flow to the game. It's still anyone's game and it's a, it's a classic as such. Right now you couldn't bet on either of these two teams winning this match. Lark Corbett is about to come in. And he's coming in in place of Benny Dunn. Up next, once Lark comes in, will be the 65 for Kilkenny. Once again to be taken by DJ Carey. So Benny Dunn from Tumivara makes way. And the young player who's so well known in and around Thurlis, plays for the Thurlis Arsfield Club. Lark Corbett gets his chance. So things being freshened up. Lark Corbett has gone into top of the left, being marked there by Michael Cavanaugh. DJ with two 65s converted so far. Another point from play during the second half. Again, maximum care taken over it, and he has put it wide. The cheers are Tipperary cheers. The great man failing on this occasion. They're still level, 13 points to 110. They've been level on eight occasions, what a match. John Carroll, the goal scorer, turning, but he's put it outside. There was great pace to that first half. Now, can the players maintain all of that? Won't be easy. Conor Gleeson has gone into midfield where he's taken up a marking job on Andy Comerford. Things moved around just a little. Conor Gleeson against Comerford comes back to Tommy Dunn. Trying to race away there from the attentions of Derek Ling. This time the goalkeeper deciding, let's just leave it out over the end line. And we'll restart with the puck out. The fans have enjoyed it. James McGarry. That's just the second goal that he's conceded in three matches in this year's championship as we watch Eamon Corcoran towards Mark O'Leary's corner. Everybody frantically battling for it. Owen Kelly protesting that it should be a Tipperary ball. Nicky English handing the ball back to the man who's going to take the sideline cut. It's up and down the field. Noel Morris to be the hitter. Two managers just down on the sideline had a quick little word just before this light sideline cut. Good friendly atmosphere, great rivalry. Philly Larkin, dashing play. Always lifts the crowd and his playing colleagues. Henry Shefflin couldn't hold on to it. But it comes back here to DJ Carey being roared on. The layoff outside towards his clubmate Charlie Carter, stopped by Brendan Cummins. Great save. A bullet shot. And cleared way down the field there by Tom Costello. 
What a contest. Whoever gets to the final will have it hard-earned. DJ unable to keep it in play, but what a save that was there from Brendan by Brendan Cummins, denying Charlie Carter as the Goran players combine DJ and Charlie. Yeah, Gerard not alone did he block, but he kind of flicked it out as well, and Costa picked it up. It could be the save that will win the match. It was, it was, very, it was a very good shot. And you felt it was going to be a certain goal. Here's Peter Barry, once again applying the pressure. The counter-attack by the Cats, Derek Ling. Huge one, high, stopped by Brendan Cummins. Some goalkeepers might have given up on that one and batted it over for fear of conceding three points. Cummins is a big man, but the pressure is coming. Wave after wave now, and that's Andy Comerford, and that's over the bar. His second point. So Kilkenny with a great response. Down they come, get that score, and lead by one. This is towards Brian O'Mara now from that puck out, taking on Richie Mullally. And he was being held back. It's free for Tipperary. Paul Kelly shaping up like he'll be the one to take it. Their left half back, brother of Owen. Can he level it here? He scored from a 65 earlier on and from another long-range free. He's given it everything. Has he got the accuracy? He has! Great point. Just like Sean McMahon, who gets great scores from centre-half back, this wing-back here is doing much the same for Tipperary, and the match is level. 18 minutes into the second half. James McGarry tucking it towards the left-hand side on this occasion. Good drive. Coming in to take it here is Eamon Corcoran, the J.K. Brackens player from near Templemore. Pressure on the backs here, pressure on Noel Hickey. But two men in there, Owen Kelly and Eugene O'Neill. Kelly has it. Whipped into space, Mullally reading it well, turned it down to himself. He's under pressure over, gets help from Peter Barry. More assistance coming in the shape of Andy Comerford. And it's way down into the forwards once more. Paul Orman comes across, trying to take it out. DJ Carey trying to deny him. This is Paul Kelly, you've got that great 65 there. So many wonderful skills, tough match. Great skill and great style about it, however. It's exactly what you expect in an All-Ireland semi-final, and the two teams are delivering. That's out by JJ Delaney. Derek Ling is coming into the space here to collect, to gather, to take it on but he's denied by Tommy Dunn, great stick work, lovely wrist work and it's back down into the centre of the goal area Lark Corbett was hoping it would come his way Eugene O'Neill applying the pressure, but it's Philly Larkin again even though he's under pressure the whole time from Owen Kelly in the first half he has responded, showing great character and no little ability as always, Hoyne coming forward decided to try and hand pass it, Char Char Charlie Carter was available, he is now that's a high shot, that's a good shot, that's a great point! Charlie Carter announces his arrival back on the big stage of Croke Park. Brian McAvoy is about to make way, I'll tell you about that in a moment. But this was worth watching and looking at again. It's going to be Jimmy Coogan who will come in. He's ready for action. And Jimmy Coogan is being marked here in this game by Noel Morris. He's playing at left half forward. Michael Cavanaugh always looks so cool under pressure. Under pressure right now is Philip Marr. Pressure from Martin Comerford. Trying to take it away past Charlie. And Charlie is furious with that decision. But the referee says, I think you chopped down. Charlie had lost the stick. Tips free will be taken by their fullback, great leader at the back, the man from Boris Alley, Philip Marr. Big one, under pressure, the half back line, but my goodness, some thundering great performances here. 
Peter Barry got that one away. They weren't quite sure where that one was going. But the line ball will be to Tipperary. Yeah, I feel, Gerard, that tip will have to change, uh, you know, John Carroll, because, like, definitely Peter Barry is winning that jewel. and had to put someone else in it. Morris cutting it in here. Lar Corbett reaching up for it. Trying to follow it through there himself. But once more, it's Owen Kelly. But this time he has put it wide. Great first half, not having the best of luck with his shooting in the second. John Carroll has now come out to right half forward, being marked by JJ Delaney. And I think the switch that you were predicting, Cyril, is taking place. It's Brian O'Mara who started the match, you may remember, at left corner forward, then moved it to the half line. He's now centre half forward. Yeah, Joe, because as it went on, Peter Barry and Ginger Pierre was beginning to mop up everything. They're just delaying ever so slightly because one of the Kilkenny players wants to do up his laces. Back in the centre here is Eamon Corcoran. Reaching up for it was Owen Kelly. Kelly's out around the half forward line right now. JJ Delaney is his marker. Coming through there. Mark O'Leary hitting it well. Great point. That's the third point now for Mark O'Leary. The teams are level for the tenth time. It's an amazing game. Lovely hand pass into the clear. The shoulder then came in from Andy Comerford. But O'Leary was able to withstand that and get a fine score. It's up and down the field. A stirring contest. Hurley went flying there. That's a good ball down. Towards the substitute is Jimmy Coogan. Ready to take on Philip Marr. His angle shot. Well, Brendan Cummins is saying wide, but the umpire has a different point of view. And Coogan is credited with his first point, is coming on as a sub. Yeah, Gerard, they've got Cummins got in full forward. You have Charlie and DJ on the two wings, have, and you have Martin Comfort got out uh, wing forward. Kilkenny by a point. Nice balance and control here. Beautifully taken by Martin Comerford, who's just made that switch, as you heard. Great work again here by DJ Carey, taking on Costello. It's still DJ Carey, will he go the whole way through? Laying it off, and the sub has scored! Jimmy Coogan's first real chance of making a major impact. There are 24 minutes of the second half gone. Kilkenny sweep into the lead, and it's DJ who made it. Might have gone through himself, and where he might be hooped, they were all after him, and Coogan belted it into the net past Brendan Cummins. Yeah. It's a match which has everything. Kilkenny lead by four points. And they're in the attack again. Coogan beaten this time by Philip Marr. Charlie Carter's chas chasing after him as well. Comes out towards Lark Corbett this time. Back in there towards Paul Kelly. Kelly beating off the challenge, or would-be challenge. And this time the umpires have a right good look and are certain that it went well away to the left. You go back to the goal, Jerry again. DJ did everything, cut down the middle. He had Charlie out in his right, but didn't give it this time to Charlie. Give it to Young Cummins and stuck him in the back of the net. And the wizard is still alive and well. And his pace is still there. Great control, got a hefty challenge just as he laid it off there. But it was Coogan who got the goal. Just what demonstrated down there. Playing as if their very lives depend upon it. A place in the final does. The injured man here is John Hoyne. John, part of the Greg Ballycallan group of players. Nicky English wants his team just to lift it again. Only four between them. Henry Shefflin's off once again. It drops short, Brendan Cummins is in trouble and Coogan's after him. Brendan Cummins lying down there just outside the small rectangle. They try to get it away. He's made saves. He's had a couple of dodgy moments as well. 
Hearts in mouth uh, stop, I think. Derek Ling knocking it in. This is an easier one for Brendan Cummins to come, to collect and to clear. Towards Lark Corbett, operating around left half forward. Here he is. Richie Malley is after him. He's fouled him and it's going to be a free in for Tipperary. 26 and a half minutes gone in the second half. Paul Kelly is outside the Kilkenny 65 metre line now. He's got three from three so far. He's given it everything, but has he got the direction? Not quite. It's still 116 to 112. Well, he's had a few worrying moments. Both goalkeepers beaten just once. Plenty more time to go. McGarry towards the left half forward position. Noel Morris reaching up for it, doesn't take it. Tommy Dunn back to try and help out. That was Martin Comerford. Referee says you pushed. Shake of the head, but that's the indication from the referee. So pressure back on the Kilkenny backs. Noel Morris to take the free. Decent ball in towards Brian O'Mara, but uh, Peter Barry played wonderfully well, supported there by Jay Delaney, and to get it out to the other man on the wing in that half-back line, Richie Mullally. Broken by Coogan. A real struggle at this stage. Players must be tired. Philip Marr. Coogan was after him. And the referee, to the annoyance of the Kilkenny players and fans, has awarded a free to Tipperary. Eugene O'Neill is about to come off the uh, Tipperary team. And John O'Brien is the one who's going to come in. Very, very crafty and useful player to be able to bring into your attack. Words of advice from Nicky English. And he goes straight in there towards full forward. Meanwhile, very patiently waiting all this while as Paul Kelly. It's a huge distance out. Happy if he can lob it in there into a dangerous situation. They were rising up for it. O'Brien trying to get his stick to it. Trying to force it out here towards Richie Mullally. Good clearance into the middle of the field. A thundering good battle. Tommy Don off once again. Ling was chasing after him. And that is where Tipperary very badly needed a point. It's Tommy Dunn's first of the day. There's still over five minutes to play of normal time. So stylish, so artistic in his approach and deadly in the finish. The fans now urging on these two teams to take them past the winning post and a date with Clare. Conor Gleeson. Former captain in an All-Ireland uh, final, of course. John Carroll up there to try and apply the pressure. Philly Larkin down on his hands and knees. Carroll gets it into the clear. Bran O'Mara trying to make something of this. Taking his time and lobbing it over. Two points between the teams. Brian O'Mara's first, now operating on the 40. Marking Peter Barry. Trying to lessen Barry's influence on the game. Great score. You want to have some finish here now, Joe, because, like, you know, there's five or six minutes left between injury time and all. Pressure on the half backs once again. Noel Morris reaching up there. Comes back here to Mark O'Leary. Inside towards Brian O'Mara. Setting off again. Peter Barry is the man he's taking on. Lobbed in delightfully. Broken down by John Carroll, waiting for somebody to come in at the finishing of this. But it's Richie Mullally instead digging in there. Oh, ball under the feet there. Of the fullback. John Carroll feeding it back in here again. And that's high and it's over the bar. And it is John O'Brien's first point. First shot on the target as well. Doing the business, only one point between the teams. Are we to have a winner today? It's as tight as that.
great match. And don't forget football coming up very shortly from Navan, Armagh against Sligo. A great day sport. Two gripping matches here in Croke Park. The minor and now the senior. Henry Sheffield on his left hand side, just as Tipperary came back. A rousing score by Shefflin. That's his sixth of the match. And once again, can Kenny enjoy a two point lead? But there'll be more scores in this game, you feel. Who will get them? Taken up here nicely by Brian O'Mara once more. Again, John O'Brien partly blocked. Kavanagh. Conor Gleeson's under this one. Makes a good catch. Inside towards John Carroll, operating in front of goal. Philly Larkett once again on his hands and knees. Still pressure, Richie Mullally facing back towards his own goal. They came to his assistance and they get it out towards Derek Ling. Who's to win it? Who will be playing for the Liam McCarthy Cup for 2002? Out once more here is Paul Ormond. Fed inside there to the man with the other golden helmet, Eamon Corcoran, and it's a golden shot. Touched over by James McGarry, Corcoran's first point. One of the great sports occasions of the year. Without doubt, Joe, the best holding game of the year. It's intense, it's hard, it's fast and it's fair. Fantastic score on the volley. It's still anyone's game. The referee has gone across to speak to the linesman to inform him how much time will be left at the end of the 70. Right now, two minutes of normal time. One point in it. Possession vital. Missed by Andy Comerford that time, but assisted by his midfield ally, Derek Ling. He's going for it. Touchdown there by Brendan Cummins. It's out over the end line, off his stick. It'll be a 65. Time for DJ, perhaps again. This was it. Brendan Cummins put under pressure, made the clearance, and then the ball quite clearly went out over the end line. They're leaving this one for Henry Shefflin. Change of plan. DJ had hit two 65s. People just a bit confused right now as to what is happening. Some of the crowd are shouting in, uh, Jared, that it might have been over the bar. Interesting what the umpires are going to say to the referee. It'll be a big talking point. Everybody wants to influence the umpires. We've had many, many talking points. So what is he doing? Yeah, it's a point, Joe. It's a point. Watch it again here. Yeah. That is pretty conclusive. Yeah, it's over the bar. It was Derek Ling with his second point. He gets the credit. Two between them. The 70 minutes are almost up and Peter Barry has it again. A wonderful performance. Derek Ling. Two great teams have thrilled us this afternoon. Martin Comerford, Charlie Carter holding possession, laying it off again. Tipperary chasing shadows. Kilkenny come looking for another point and there was a hurley thrown and it's going to be a free in. It's been a fantastic contest, Joe. Like, there's no doubt about it. I think it was up to me in the driving seat, but the way this game is going, even tipping this ball over the bar, you could never say that a goal won't come for tip. I wonder was it Paul Ormond who actually let his stick off that time. So this is a golden chance for Henry Shefflin now. Just to tap it over. You can watch the stick here of Ormond. Coming loose. Definite free. Six points for Shefflin so far. High up in over the bar. Almost into the next field. Seven for Shefflin, three between them. 119 to 116. Tipperary now trying to build, but they're once again denied space and opportunity by Philly Larkin. That's gathered in there by Paul Ormond. Stick fastened to his hand once again, kicking it away past the attentions of Charlie Carter. Didn't quite see how many minutes were to be played on. 
There's still a bit of time. Martin Comerford. And that's out over the end line. And annoyed Philip Marr is the match running away from Tipperary. Two minutes of added time to be played, but uh, we're now a minute and a half into that. Time very much against Tipperary. Having lost their Munster title, are they now about to lose the All-Ireland title won in such memorable fashion last year? DJ comes through and he puts it over and Kilkenny now surely are in the All-Ireland final. They may come and go, Jar, but there'll be only one ever DJ carry and you can talk about all the greats you like. It's been a pleasure to see the man in action again. And what about this man, hurling the game of his life as well? Barry is superb. Martin Comerford here. Tipperary looking very demoralised, as well they might be. Brendan Commons makes a good touch this time. Coogan's after it, Noel Morris is after it there for Tipperary. Also, Paul Kelly trying to get it out. Just need to get possession once again, but they have to make up a goal and a point, and that is just to try and tie it. Kilkenny, a memorable, memorable contest. DJ now be told, get back your goal by Noel Morris, tip one to take their free, Tommy Dunn hitting it in, anything other than the goal here would hardly be enough, John O'Brien was hitting it, still more opportunities and Owen Kelly sees his shot come out off a defender and it's gone for another 65, we've had plenty of them this afternoon, Paul Kelly wants it very very quickly. That was Owen Kelly there, went off the defender, I think it was off Philly Larkin. So here we go. Kelly, I'm sure we'll have to try and drop it in and hope for the best that he's doing. Skits through! And it's just wide. And it's all over. What a game. A wonderful, wonderful contest. A credit to both teams, to their loyal supporters, to their coaches and selectors and all the backroom teams. We have seen a wonderful game, and look at the look of delight on Brian Cody. Yeah, Jerry, you've seen one of the all-time great games. Fantastic game of Hurling. You know, it's what it's all about, really. Like, and it's going to take some team now to beat Kilkenny, but they're there waiting, and they'll be quite happy to meet any of them. Well, there's some unfinished business, and I don't mean any nasty stuff. There, of course, were the two teams that met in the 1997 All Ireland final. Yeah, Jaron, two for great champions. They went down with a fight. You know, it didn't go down without a fight. That game could have gone either way until the last few minutes. There's the final score. It's Kilkenny 120, Tipperary 116. We have seen a great day's hurling. DJ came back. He knew it was a risk because people wanted to remember him for the great player that he was. We'll try and get a word with him shortly, but it's the mark of the man that he was prepared to come back and contribute what he could to his county. And my goodness, did he make a contribution. Great, great player, but Henry Schiffer had a fantastic game. And to me, like, you know, the man that stood out over the tour today was Peter Barry. He dominated from start to finish. He had a fantastic game as such. But when you have the likes of forwards like Schiffer and DJ in your team, you're always going to have a very good team. And Charlie Command did his job. Kilkenny will be very happy tonight. It was memorable. Tip, uh, Tip and Nicky will be aware that they have played a full part in a great afternoon's entertainment. Let's go down and let's see what the comments are on the sideline. DJ is talking with Jim Carney. DJ Carey, welcome back. Thanks very much, Jim. Tough going out there. It's a bigger pitch than the last one I played on, but... Uh... It's great to be back, great to be playing and contesting in all Ireland again. This old ancient game has given you a bit of grief the odd time, DJ, but you must love it. I, um, you know, I, I, I really honestly thought my year was gone, Jim, to be honest. I, I had given up on it. I felt I wasn't in, in right enough shape. But thanks to Brian and, and thanks to the lads and county board and a lot of very good friends uh, that, that convinced me to have a go. And uh, it stays like this, so, you know, make it all worth it. It was a massive game for neutrals to watch, DJ. You can't possibly know that, but what an effort it must have to win it. Oh, I thought, I thought when we went three or four points up, we were flying it. Then Tip came back, I think, to a point. Uh, I thought, here it goes again. But, uh, you know, it's, it's great. We, we fought back again. And I'm absolutely thrilled. Thrilled for everyone. Fantastic to see you back. Jim, thanks very much. Delighted.
DJ Carey, Brian Cody, can I first put it to you that it took a great team to win this game? Yeah, it was a great, I'd say it was a great game of hurling. I thought Tipperary were magnificent. And, you know, out there it was, it was tough, just ferocious being on the line. And the same thing on the pitch, obviously. Tipperary are Ireland champions. And, you know, they proved why to the... And we're just, just delighted to have beaten them, to be able to just snatch it on the day, because, believe me, it could really have gone either way. What is it about these fellas of yours, Brian? We didn't know much about Martin Cumberford, for instance, up to this year. Uh, Philly Larkin went out there today against a bright star of the game and played a blinder. What is it about these fellas? Well, I think Philly Larkin, his pride with Philly Larkin, he was um, certainly disappointed last year to be taken off and he was sort of stung by criticism as people thinking that he wouldn't be up to it today, but he was absolutely outstanding today. And when Philly's back is to the wall, it's, it's the place for him. Uh, no, look, it was a, a fabulous game of hurling, I would imagine. It was a ferocious contest for us, and we're just delighted to be in the All Ireland final. But that's all we are. We're in the All Ireland final, and we're chilling now, but we'll come down very, very quickly because there's no cup out there today. And, you know, we're facing an outstanding team, a team that, who knows very well how to win big matches in All Ireland finals in a, couple, in a few weeks' time. And we put our heads down from tonight on, and we'll think about that game. Many congratulations, Brian, and thank you for the part that your fellas and that Nicky's fellas played in this magnificent spectacle today. Thanks, sir. Well, absolutely. I mean, and congratulating to Mosmo Kahi. Kenny, you have to congratulate both teams, I think, on a massive game of hurling. Yeah, it was a fantastic advert for the game. It was absolutely brilliant. And uh, I, I, you feel sorry for Tipperary players there, I must say. I mean, they're abso absolutely gutted themselves and they gave, gave it their all. You know, and you, you could pick out individuals and maybe it went wrong in this, in this place and maybe they should change the centre forward sooner. But at the end of the day, they gave it everything, and I mean that's that's all they can actually do. They gave it of their best, but they came up against a very very strong Kilkenny team today. Well marshaled in the back, Fiddy Larkin had a blinder in the second half period, but it was well marshaled by number six there and Peter Barry. Every time he went up, he put, plucked the ball out of the sky, and I don't think Tip had any answer from today in the form that he was in. And they were that their backline was the launching pad for their success. But the game could have Sherlock Nan could have gone any way, but in the end, it was one minute of play and the substitute, Jimmy Coogan, that changed the whole thing. Well, it was, but you see, before you say that, you know, I've been going to games for many years, been involved playing with Claire, involved as manager, yeah. but this was the game. You know, I've never seen a better game than today. It was absolutely thrilling, the quality of the play. But as you say, it all came down to an incident, a, a one-minute incident at the end. And it'll just show you the value of the 20 or 30 men you have now, bringing on Jimmy Coogan here. But of course, the man himself has said, oh, well, first of all, he scored a pint off his left-hand side, off out near the sideline. Imagine to come on in a tense game like this and show your first game and show no inhibitions up, uh, up and the ball over the bar. Now, here's the man himself, and this is his, his huge contribution today. Now, Charlie Carter was to his right, and everybody thought he was going to pass it to him. But what does he do? He spots the man inside, Jimmy Coogan inside, ball in the net. The vision, the vision to see that under pressure, that's the genius of DJ Carey. Ball, and that's one goal and a pint. They won by four pints. That's when the game changed. But, we have to pay a tribute to Tipperary. Sure. This was the best game that Tipperary played in the last two years, even though they lost by four points. They were absolutely mighty. They were fired up for it. The quality of that striking, everything was so good. And it's a game that will live in everybody's memory for a long, long time. All right, gentlemen, we will have more from both tomorrow's and from uh, Ger later on in our nighttime programme. But, of course, we must go from Croke Park here because we have the Armagh Sligo match coming up from Navin very, very shortly. Briefly, let me just remind you about our phone number. If you want to pick the man of the match, you have plenty of choices, although... Unbelievable games playing now, you know, it was ding dong, as I said, to Brian O'Mara at one stage and, and it was score for score and it's what everyone wants, you know, we're playing probably in one of the best stadiums in Europe, uh, the surface is brilliant, you had two good teams there, All-Ireland champions and the league champions and they were going hell for letter to get into the All-Ireland against Clare and uh, that's, what we, that's what we served up, so it was, just, it was just great to win it, you know. We started off at the beginning of the year and, and it was going to be, uh, whoever was on farm on the day was going to play, you know, but... It's going to take 20 players, you know, to win the All Ireland. If if we get to win, and whoever wins it is going to need 20 players. You know, it's a big uh, pitch, and the ball is going 90 there. You know, we're going to need 20 players, and thankfully the subs come in there. Jimmy Coogan, you know, done a great job for us. Yeah, I thought with five minutes to go we were back within a point, and I, I thought at that stage we were going to win the game. Um, but then Henry Shefflin, and to be fair to him, caught the next puck out, and it was over the bar, and you know that was two again, and then we brought it back to one again, but. You know, we hadn't, we didn't get it to level at that stage, and I think if we did, we, we would have gone on to win it. But you know, you have to hand it to Kilkenny as well. They they played fantastic hurling on the day, and uh, what you saw was some of the best players in the country playing at their very best on both sides. And uh, fortunately for us, we're on the wrong side of it. And uh, but there'll be other days. I mean, obviously, we're going to have to try and come back again next year. That's what sport is all about. 
And, you know, over the last four years, in fairness to Nicky, especially Nicky, Ken Hogan and Jack Bergen, they've, they've brought the Tipperary team to a new level. And I think all of the players would be, you know, would, be, would admit that. And definitely, Nicky has given so much to this team and he's really left his trademark on the team. And we try to represent him and the lads as best we could every day we go out to play. And, um, you know, we're disappointed for him as well. It would have been nice to do back-to-back -back all Ireland, but unfortunately it wasn't to be. And did the high intensity that this game was played at, can Kilkenny find that high level again for the final? Yes, Jim. Worry about that. <laughs> we'll, we'll take a breather tonight, Ronnie, man. Worry about that next week. I think that's a very good idea. <laughs> a tremendous game of hurling. Quality from the first whistle to the last. And at the end of it all, a rare pairing in the All-Ireland Final. Kilkenny against Clare. Joe Lachnan was telling us earlier on that just the first time since 1932. Now, we thought you're, you knew that because you had played in it yourself. But well, I might look at all right, but I guarantee you I didn't. <laughs> But I mean, obviously, what a game to look forward to. What a game we had today. Well, you see the highlights there. It just gives you a flavour uh, yeah. of the game. It, really, to see the highlights, you'd want to watch the 73 minutes of sure. the game because every game, every second nearly of the game was a highlight. The pace, there was an energy to the game today and a pace to it. Ferocious tackling, taken on both sides, not a dirty stroke struck, with brilliant scores. And the contradictory thing about it was there was brilliant defensive play. Yes, it was 120 to 116. 10 points each at half time. Yeah. Outstanding individual dis displays. As I said at the end of the game, I've seen many games I have never seen better. And I think even Tipperary supporters after, we were talking to them coming out afterwards, sure. and while they were disappointed, mm. they were really... They knew really, they'd seen a great game of hurling. They holding. knew they'd seen yeah. a really great game of hurling, and they were really proud of the way, their t the, the way their team stood up to a brilliant Kilkenny team on the day. We were talking this afternoon, Tomás, about the fact that in a game as tight as that, you know, one or two little incidents or events will change the course of the game. Now, we talked about the Tipperary goal or the Kilkenny goal, but before that, straight after half time, Kilkenny sneaked in two points that put a little gap there in it. Yes, and, uh, and, and in the first half period, you suppose, Tipperary, when they looked at themselves, they had one or two goal-scoring opportunities that they failed to take. And the start of the game, they were, they were waiting to get back into the game, and the, suddenly they hit with a soccer punch. Kilkenny come out of the blocks very, very quick, and there's two great scores coming up. And uh, it was typical of Kilkenny. They get their hurlies in and knock the ball forward, and they're great men to put the ball over the bar when the chances arise. And here we see, here's John Hahn. Turns around to his left hand, and... Like they're inspirational points. I mean, mm. these, these guys are hitting the ball from 45, 50 yards out, and they're great scores. Again, we're so going to see made it 11 points to 10, yep. and then straight after. Another one again, down the field again, up front. Here we see Eddie Brennan, maybe had a quiet game himself, but again, it's picked on the left hand side. It's a quick turn into his right, and it's a great score. And those points were, 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 were slowly putting the nail into Brady's coffin. And it was only just the start of the second half, but Kilkenny came out and they showed themselves that we were going to be leaders in the second half period, and they certainly were in the end. Tip, I mean, battled on forever in this one, Jared. They got a goal in the game that kept them in it, but you felt at that stage they needed this goal, brilliant and all as it was. Uh, they were chasing the game, as Tomás yeah. says, after that, but this was an absolutely <coughs> brilliant goal. Uh, Brian O'Mara here. Now, it shows maybe how you might op open up this Kilkenny defence. You know, a long cross ball across. Now, watch you do need when he gets the ball here. It is a brilliant ball. Cross that ball to the 21, you hear so many people coaching. Yeah. Uh, Connor Leeson in after sa starting it up, and then John Carroll taps it into the back of the net. But it was the one time they opened up that Kilkenny defence. Now, they had got great chances in the first half, as Tomás said, they got three chances in the first half uh, uh, of goals. Mm. They didn't take them. Kilkenny, I think, got one. It's all about putting away the chances. In a game like today, the smallest little thing made the difference. Well, that, that really set the game on fire, that goal there. Yeah, we'll talk about taking your chances. I mean, young Jimmy Coogan, Andy Cumber talked about him there, came on, got a goal and a point in the space of a minute. This yeah, uh, everybody has spoken in the last couple of weeks about the strength of your panel and that every team yeah. now is ca carrying a panel of 30 players. Jimmy Coogan, is no, he's only on the field a couple of seconds and there's a ball out the left-hand side under the Cusick stand, under the stand and it's a terrific score. Now, he can maybe be crucified if the ball had went wide as well, you know. Then he's in the right place at the right time and it's a terrific run by DJ. There's great vision here. George mentioned today, Charlie Carter was on the, on the right-hand side. A lot of the defenders thought the ball was going to go that, in that direction. Mm -hmm. And he passes inside to Jimmy Coogan and he finishes. Terrific score and a terrific boost for Kilkenny at that stage in the game. But so I suppose, you're, sorry to cut across you, I suppose Clare now have no chance in the all Ireland final with that kind of a performance. I was just going to say that, that showed also the greatness of the Ferrari. Yeah. Four points down, goal gone in, it seemed to be the soccer goal. But Tip, courageously, they didn't bottle it after that, came back with four points in a row from Tommy Dunn, Brian O'Mara, John O'Brien. Mm. It really showed the fighting qualities. And I, you, would you believe it? I'd have more respect for Tipperary today, for the way they fought out that game and the way they fought back at, at, the, at crucial times in the games than you would have in some of the games that they won. 
now as regards the All Ireland, <laughs> I think it's the best a, thing we better do is. It's going to Kenny now. It's really going to make Kenny, Kenny <laughs> overwhelming favourites. Yes. Well, uh, it is it is sobering <laughs> to say the least. It is sobering. There'll be no Venus, every saint <laughs> possible under the sun.